Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Here's a quick picture of the materials we're going to need to tie this simple redfish bug. Um, we're going to go into more explanation of the materials as we go. So to start, let's attach the thread. We're going to wrap all the way to the back of the hook shank where the hook begins to bend and trim off your excess. Next, we're going to attach that one by one inch uh, patch of craft fur. It's been trimmed and prepared, and you want to measure about two and a half times the hook shank length. Trim it off, make three loose wraps, and then cinch it down and wrap it in. When you wrap this back, make sure you wrap past the point of the hook so we don't have a fouling issue when you're fishing it. Next we're going to attach two silly legs wrap it around the uh, thread there and attach directly on the top of the hook. If you've got some kind of material uh, device like I have on this Renzetti Master, uh, it's good for managing these things. Okay. Next, we're going to add the Arctic Fox. You can supplement this with anything you've got, Marabou, uh, Finnish Raccoon. Remove the under hair. It's going to go to a length of about half of the Craftford tail. And we're going to make three loose wraps. And then we're going to tie it in. Once this is attached, make sure you kind of split the material and wrap it equally uh, with half being around each side of the, the hook bend. Okay, now we're going to put on the eyes. I'm using bead chain eyes today, but you can tie any eyes you want in here. Um, I recommend having, you know, several different variations in your fly box. Uh, this obviously probably being the lightest to all the way to heavy dumbbell, you know, barbells. Um, you know, you never know what the situa situation is going to dictate and what depth you need to fish these flies at, so it's good to have a few different ones. If you're attaching eyes, I do, this is a good method of wrapping underneath once you got them squared up. It kind of pushes the eye up and locks everything into place so they don't roll. Okay, now we're going to tie on the brush. You can use any brush you want. Um, you know, anything you got laying around, the crustacean type brushes that are a little bit thicker or what they call a shrimp or a streamer brush. This is somewhere kind of halfway in the middle. Um, just whatever you got. Here's the only real tedious part about this fly. It's managing the hair of the brush. Uh, anybody that's tied with a brush, you know, the first time you do it, you'll realize that this is the only hard part about brushes. Um, I have a little comb here. You can use your bodkin. You can use a cat brush. Whatever, but just take your time and make sure that you manage this really well so you're not overlapping and, and crushing down uh, fibers and everything is, is getting on there nice and even. And while we're doing this, I'm going to take a quick second to tell you you can modify this any way you see fit. It's a very simple generic fly. You can add weight to the eyes to get it down. You can remove the um, silly legs if you want this to look more like a sculpin instead of a shrimp. You can tie it in different colors to mimic you know whether you're going for more of a bait fish or more of a crustacean. The uh, You can do anything you want with this and kind of adapt it to what you're trying to do. When you're wrapping this I like to get it pretty tight in on the eyes um, so it's real nice and tight behind the eyes. Okay. When you're done with the brush, this is a, what I like to do is to twist the material on the tag in. This just kind of makes it a lot easier to get that thread in there to tie it off and make it nice and neat.
I always like to make sure we get everything back and go in the right direction, give it a couple wraps to manage everything, and then whip finish. Okay, now you just want to give this guy a little bit of a, uh, a comb job here. Make sure everything is, is sitting nice and even and the way it's naturally going to fall. Uh, then we're going to give him a haircut. So what I like to do here is rest the, the scissors on the eyes. is a good template to get you a nice even kind of cut as you go around. I do like to leave uh, a little bit of material sticking up right where the hook point is to give it kind of a collar. Um, I think it just looks more like a shrimp this way and it actually I believe helps it ride collect you know correctly in the water. Okay, when you trim these silly legs, what I really like to do uh, is make two shorter and two longer. So grab two of them, cut them short, other two make a little bit longer. Kind of gives you that real shrimp look. I also like to really remove these things from the vise to do the final trimming so you can see what it's actually going to look like and make any adjustments you feel necessary to to make it look the way you want it to look. Okay, lastly we're just going to add some glue to our whip finish to make sure it all stays together. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this serves you well and stay safe.